On the northern tip of the Hu Peninsula lies a hidden World War II secret, that of the site of an anti-shipping boom in conjunction with a military camp, as well as a landing station for an underwater or submarine telephone cable that would have connected Kent to Essex. In regards of the anti-shipping boom, a pontoon would have stretched out into the river on both sides, reaching from St Mary's Bay to Canvey Island on the north side, and likely connected in the middle by a submarine net or possibly a number of small vessels joined together with a steel chain. The total crossing is around 2.6 kilometres. The camp is accessed by a single track concrete road which leads from Decoy Hill Road the nearest civilian road it is 2.2 kilometer journey from the camp to the nearest house what you'll be looking at is the cable landing station a possible equipment room or armory that remains in the camp which is across a short concrete beam bridge and the foundations of the camp within piles of rubble which is a sad reminder of some amazing World War II history that has been left to ruin on this bleak landscape. World War II history coming at you. Incredible bit of World War II history. Um, this is one of those places uh, that there's two separate locations. So there's, uh, I don't really want to sort of give away the other one because I'm going to do that for another later date. Uh, so you'll find out about that place. Uh, just let's just say explosives and we'll leave it at that. Um, so at the northern end of the Hu Peninsula, which means that you are in for a treat because you're going to have to walk. <laughs> and um, so you sort of, it's one of these explores that you feel like you've really, really earned it. Uh, even though there's probably only two surviving buildings that are uh, what we're going to look at today, the importance of this place uh, shouldn't be underestimated. I'm in one of them now. I'm in the cre uh, the uh, I am in the cable cabling station. Uh, so let's have a look. Now it's windy outside, which is why I'm doing this in here, and I'm hopefully going to sort of do a very good job. Now, if I look outside, oh, there we go. If you look outside, uh, you can see the military road, which is amazing, really, to sort of see. Uh, there you go, Ingridu, coming through. <laughs> and it would have come through this way however we're in this incredible building which is the cabling station and there is it's graffiti and uh i'm saving the best bit for last by the way it's in there um 1980 christmas day there's some incredible Graffiti, not for the right reasons, but more for the dates that have been shown. So 2014, there. Um, 2012. If some of this is offensive, I do apologise. It's really more for the dates. There's this 2017 one there. That's interesting. 20, there's an 03 one there. It's not... We're literally in the middle of nowhere. And... Probably one of the most northernest parts of Kent you can actually go to, really. And it's kind of crazy to sort of think that, you know, to actually get here, to put this graffiti up, it's going to take you a, a good walk, depending on where you are. Um, 1999, 1980 was the earliest I'd seen so far. There's an 05, 103, uh, 97. There you go. Right, so... Let's try and I'm just gonna I didn't bring a torch with me um because I didn't realise how dark it was going it was gonna be in there. So hopefully that's worked. Probably is not it's not, probably not even gonna work at all. But let's go inside. So this was bolted shut. Um it's such a ridiculously like I mean that's when they've opened that, they've designed it so that it's going to stay open. Now, let's go inside. It's very dark. It smells.
it's very eerie in this room. I've just, just realised my backpack is just scraped the back. But I have no idea what's in here. Around the corner. Well, the torch is working alright, actually. And they, ladies and gentlemen, some of the cabling. Now you talk about your history. That's pretty damn good for rareness. You just got to take my word on it. Oh, let's see around the corner. For a small, for a small building, it's very eerie and creepy in here. That's cool. So that's where the cables. How amazing is that? Oh, sorry, my legs just gave out then. Look at this. For the size of for the size of history that's here, for the size of history that's here, it's just incredible. So you've got those cables, and that's what they would have looked like. And they are, sorry to kick them, I don't really mean to do that, but that's history right there. And I wonder, as I wonder, when people graffitied in here, do they actually know what this was used for? Do they know the importance of it? More importantly, more importantly, do they know the importance? Aha! Good. Nice bit of detailing. That's what we look for on the channel. Trying to get the detailing in on these. That's incredible. Let's see on the top, there you go. So I'm trying to get stuff that you wouldn't necessarily know about. That is incre absolutely incredible. Absolutely amazing. Let's turn let's turn this off because I'm not really gonna need my torch anymore. Go on torch that, so I'm so um, using it for my phone. Oh I'll try this one hand is this torch. Turn it off, thank you very much. Um yeah. Just <laughs> it's so incredible. I I I <laughs> It's the one time where you're kind of grateful that they've put dates on the graffiti because it shows, you know, Fugs Chatham, yeah, obviously, Midway, Midway Boys, yeah. Uh, so that, um, yeah, it's, and oh. Let's look at that. Covered in spiders' webs. Yeah, how See, incredible! I'm still, I'm still desperately trying to work this out. All your base are belong to us. Very weird. Right. Okay. So, this cabling station. Um, let's have a quick look. I don't really. I'm worried about the wind. So underneath us, it would literally travel underneath here. So uh, bear with me and we'll have a look up the top. Let's go. Okay, so I'm walking now on the road, which is in remarkable condition, to be honest. I'm actually probably more surprised at the condition of the road. Now above us, is Canby Island, well above us or over the uh, over that path there, 
is Canvey Island. And to think that this was a camp. So we're looking now, we're walking towards what would have been the ammunition store and you'll see some demolition of um, the buildings, the actual camp itself. So there's not there's not much of it of uh because well I came this way so that I could do the video of uh the other place I was gonna do as well. But unfortunately there's just loads and loads of cows in this this thing that I really wanted to do. So um I'm resorting to doing this one for today and then coming back hopefully when the and there's an the opportunity that the cows might not be there so um yeah again i wholeheartedly apologize for the wind but as you can see there's we're not really getting much leeway or anything and i'm having to wear a hoodie because literally like i was sort of getting eaten really got a few bites and it's like oh god that was a bit of a painful one so it's like, yep, no, I have to wear my hoodie now for the moment and just sweat it out, I think, really. It's a glorious day. And, uh, yeah. So you can now see, a uh, finger doing the infill of rubble. The foundations are still there. This is pretty cool. This is the, it all dates this period. All 100% World War II. And, uh, yeah. Look at that. It's a good use of concrete. As you can see, uh, it's a nice walk it's it's not that bad um let's go in okay um <laughs> so it's not the greatest building built in the world ever however it is a building nonetheless of importance and it's starting to sort of slowly go the way of the other buildings and i wonder if this the reason why they probably didn't demolish this one may have been because it would have just served as perfect storage which i think is the same as the cabling room which is that the farmer or farmers who are on this land probably these buildings probably benefited them to use them afterwards i would assume i'm not saying that's for definite but it's perfect if you are a farmer that you could use these as a multi-purpose and obviously because of the huts themselves you know it makes it uh although the foundations are solid so i don't really know maybe he just picked and chose what he wanted to do the farmer if that's the case it might not have been it might have just been for safety purposes but then when you look at this building you do have to question why they kept this one you can all the graffiti, everyone. Although you can't really, can you? Can't we? Really. Almost impossible to do that video without. Okay, so I am now standing in the camp itself. And what's really interesting is when you look on the map, because if you're any lover of history, as I am, I like to look at my maps on there and make sure that uh, it gives me some more justification as to what I'm looking at. So it's really interesting because they put, they put camp disused on the map. And that's that's an understatement. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, they ain't coming back to life anytime soon. It definitely, it's, it's more than disused. It's, it's literally vanished. Um, the only thing that does give it away is obviously you can see the rubble of the remnants of what these buildings were um, for accommodation. I mean, you've got to understand, we are nowhere near... Uh, any shops, anything. And you've got to imagine in World War II, there was even less. <laughs> so it's kind of like, you've got to put yourself in the mindset and sort of think, right, if, if you were stationed out here, 
that's it. You might as well be in the middle of nowhere. It's like, it's an alien landscape. The only familiarity you'd have is by walking over and just seeing that you'd see Essex. And yeah, so it's, it's a very strange sort of place. It's a, it is a camp, but it, it is literally, you are so, so nowhere near anything. Um, and even today, you're so near, you, I mean, you're, you know, like I said, it's in, it's an explore that really does sort of um, make you feel good about yourself when you've done it. Because you're kind of like, I did an epic walk to get here. You know, I did everything I could have should have. And, you know, you feel rewarded for doing it. So the only thing that I can't change is because I don't have the world's best camera recording equipment that you will pick up the wind. Um, but you know, maybe if I'm rich and I can start earning some more pennies, but yeah, this is the camp. So let's take a look. I mean, again, the, the floor is in incredible good condition. You can see the rubble, uh, again, I apologize to the wind. You can see the makeup of what these places would have been like. There's uh, piles of rubble everywhere. Kind of like an Aladdin cave of uh, history. I've not seen a soul even more I saw no tell a lie I saw two guys fishing on the way up here and that was it So behind me is the foundations, again, of the overlay of what this camp was. 